Hi. Oh, it's so, yay. <laughs> Thank you. There is no better place to be than the Iowa State Fair. I tell you what a phenomenal opportunity for us to showcase the best of the best in Iowa, whether it's agriculture, industry, culture. What a phenomenal opportunity to have Iowans gather to greet friends and family and just to spend time with uh, at the Iowa State Fair. We're here every single day, and there's no place else that I'd rather be. So we're having a great time at the State Fair, and I hope you are too. Hey, I'm going to start by giving everybody just a little update on Kevin. Uh, we've had a lot of text messages and a lot of um, calls and, and prayers and thoughts. And so uh, Kev went in last night. He was having an appendicitis attack. And we went to the emergency room at about 8.30. And about 4, four o'clock this morning, he had an appendep appendectomy. So um, we were at the right place. I just want to thank the doctors, the surgeons, and the nurses who did such a uh, phenomenal job of, of taking care of Kevin. He's back home already. And He's going hunting in two weeks, so that's all he's cared about. He wants to make sure that he's in good shape and uh, he can head off and, and go elk hunting. So anyway, thanks, uh, thanks so much for the text and the well wishes. He's doing really well. I just wanted to start, too, by saying what an incredible opportunity it is to serve you as the 43rd governor of this great state. And it is so, so... It is so reflective of the opportunities that exist within our borders, where a small town girl from rural Iowa, St. Charles, Iowa, town of about 500, whose dad and mom, who are here with me today, went to work at John Deere and farmed, and mom stayed at home. And with those humble beginnings, I was able to serve as a county treasurer, to be elected to the state senate, to serve as the lieutenant governor alongside the longest serving governor in the country, and today serve Iowans at the highest level as the first female governor of the great state of Iowa. I believe with all my heart that Iowa is a state where if you work hard and you dream big and you have a passion for what you're doing, absolutely anything anything is possible. And I like to say that my story is the Iowa story. And I hear it repeated as I travel all across the state. And our goal is to unleash more opportunities so we can have more great, great Iowa stories in every single corner of this state. Um, you know, we have a lot of positive things happening in Iowa, and I know the other side wants to think everything's doom and gloom and Iowa's going to hell in a handbasket, and I'm sorry, it is not. Now, no, it's not. Okay, so I, I, I will admit I might be a little biased, and so that's why it's really important when we have third-party validators recognize the great things that are happening in Iowa. And whether that means that we're, you know, the, the number one state for middle-class families, the number one state for high school graduation, more students taking community college classes than any other state in this country, and that helps keep the cost of higher education down and they're more likely to succeed and complete, and that's good things. Second lowest cost of doing business, third best managed state in the country. Unemployment is at 2.7%, third lowest in the country. 60 to 60,000 jobs available every single day in every single corner of this state. And incomes are rising, 4.5% in the last quarter of 17, 5% in the last quarter of 2018. And those are really, really positive things. And I got something to tell you. We're just getting started. We are never going to be satisfied with the status quo. There is so much potential and capacity that exists in this state, and we're excited about continuing the momentum. Really proud of my first year as governor. I set, you know, I laid out a bold and ambitious agenda, working with this dynamic legislators and our legislators, Republican legislators that are working hard to represent the people that they've been sent to uh, Des Moines to really make things happen and follow through with the promises that they, they told their 
their constituents. And we're really focused on, we focused on reducing taxes while maintaining our priorities, growing jobs and wages and expanding opportunities. Uh, we're investing in education and helping Iowans get the skills to fill the jobs that are available today and the jobs of tomorrow. We're addressing Iowa's health care needs and providing solutions for some of our most vulnerable Iowans. Our budget is balanced. We've repaid the um, emergency management and the, the uh, savings account. And by the way, there's more money in that savings account than when we took office in 2011. <laughs> So, as I said earlier, I understand the challenges that everyday Iowans are facing. And that's why I could not have been prouder to sign the largest tax cut in the history of the state of Iowa. We did that by being fiscally responsible and virtually every single Iowan across this state will see more money in their pockets. And that's your money, not ours. You know how to spend it. And I want to tell you, I, Kevin and I, when we were raising our three girls, in order to make ends meet, Kev worked days and I worked nights and weekends checking groceries at Hy-Vee. And I often tell people, if you want to see some real penny pitching going on, you spend a day selling groceries to Iowans and you see how well they manage their dollars and you do understand it's their money and every dollar counts. <laughs> so as a, as a mom, and as a grandma of nine, soon to be 10, and a mom of a teacher, I know that there is nothing more important than investing in our young people. They are our greatest asset and they're our future. And that's why I am proud of the historic investments that we've made in K-12 education. Fourth highest in the country, eighth when it comes to teacher salaries. We have a nationally recognized STEM educational program, science, technology, engineering, and math. Those are the jobs of the future and they're growing three times faster than non-related STEM jobs. And if we wanna be innovative and competitive, we need to make sure that we're educating our students for the jobs of tomorrow and we're doing it. But make no mistake, if we're not preparing our young people for the jobs of today or the jobs of tomorrow, then we're failing. And we have to be careful about measuring the quality of education by the sheer number of dollars that we put into it. So that's why we're utilizing work-based learning and project-based learning and apprenticeship programs and computer science programs, really bringing together educators, business and industry, communities and students so they can see what the workforce looks like, so they can see how technology is changing and in this disruptive economy that we're continuing to develop and raise continuous learners so that they can be adaptive and be successful. And most importantly, so they're connecting with our businesses right in our communities and we're keeping our young people in the state of Iowa and that's what we want to do. So we said, we said no to Obamacare and we came up with a solution. This still needs to be addressed in Washington, D.C., but we couldn't wait. I had working families, small businesses, and farmers who didn't qualify for subsidies, who needed an option. They needed an affordable health care plan. They couldn't afford 57% increase in premiums. And so working with this legislator, we provided an option, an affordable health care plan for families, for small businesses, and for farmers so that they're not having to decide between paying a mortgage and health care. It's the right thing to do. We're still going to hold D.C. accountable, but we came up with a solution to provide the options that people deserve. So the other thing that I believe a leader does, and I spent 19 years at the local government uh, level as a county treasurer, and that was a nonpartisan office. We worked together to get things done. 
And it's really important as a leader that you bring people together. My grandpa was an FDR Democrat. And you know, we saw things a little bit differently. And when we would debate and discuss and sometimes even disagree about issues, we always did that with respect for each other. And that is something I've carried with me in everything that I've done. And I could not be prouder of three pieces of significant legislation that we got passed this year where we put Iowans first and we moved Iowa forward. The first one we call the job trainings bill, which is a future ready Iowa bill to help Iowans get the skills to fill those 66,000 jobs that are available every single day and help our young people see that there's multiple career paths to a great career and that career is right here in, in Iowa. Unanimously, every single legislator, Republican and Democrat, voted for that bill. <laughs> Comprehensive mental health care reform, I am so proud of that. We started reform in 2013, but as a good, you need to continually review these programs. And so we found that there were areas that we needed to do better. We identified and addressed the barriers and the issues with the mental health systems. I'm really proud that we were able to get that done. Again, passed unanimously. Every single legislator voted for that bill because it was the right thing to do and we need Iowans getting the services that they deserve. And the last piece of legislation or that we passed is a, um, a teenage suicide prevention bill that helps educators get the training that they need so they can identify early on some early, early signs of mental illness so that our young people can get the services that they need to, to learn and to have a healthy and productive life. So this is what I like to say. We got a great story to tell. We have a lot to be proud of, and we have a lot of work to do. And I am looking forward to working hard on your behalf every single day to continue to build on the momentum and the progress that we've made over the last several years to keep Iowa moving, Kim, in the right direction. If you listen to what my opponent wants to do, he wants to reverse every single positive thing that we've done. The first thing he wants to do is raise your taxes. That's raising taxes on small businesses and working families and farmers that he says that he's supporting. I don't. He doesn't support affordable health care plans. I do. Again, it's our farmers and our families and our small businesses that need an option. And if things get and get worse, the, the guy that wants to be the CEO of the great state of Iowa, when he was asked if he thought Iowa was the best state in the country to live, what do you think he said? No. No. And what do you think? He got a second chance. He said, now, now surely you think that Iowa is the best place in the country to live. And he said, absolutely not. Well, I'm telling you, we are the number one state in the country. Just ask U.S. News and World Report. And this is about, that's right, number one. And you know what he's saying? That, that recognition, that number one state in the country, this teeny tiny state in the heartland of America, that was a recognition of our people. It was a recognition of our work ethic and our values and people just like every one of you making a difference in communities all across this state. I'm a fifth generation Iowan, I love this state and I believe there's so much capacity and opportunity yet to be exceeded and I wanna give back to a state that has given so much to my family and me and I'm gonna fight hard every single day to continue to have the opportunity to represent the number one state in the country. God bless you, God bless Iowa, and God bless the United States of America. Go cast your corn kernel. Go cast your corn kernel. Let's do it. We need your help. We need all of you working to get this done and I promise you if you help us, we'll continue to serve you. Let's go, go Iowa.